Doc here. Yeah, Doc, uh, this is Mel. I'm over in Aurora now, heading north along the coast. I uh, thought I'd give you a call. Oh, fantastic. I'm moving that way. I was just uh, wondering, uh, can you fly a little bit low today for me? Yeah, I'll, I'll come in a little lower than normal. Okay, fantastic, because I got those new filters on the cameras, and hopefully with the way the water clarity is and the tide the way it's looking, we should be really getting some great eel grass, because that's my concern, and with these filters, we can fly over them. How fast are you going to be able to travel today, do you think, airspeed-wise? Okay, no, that'll be fine, because with these filters, I'll be able to pick out where the eel grass beds are, and also if they're a blue color, that means there's a lot of pollutants in there, so I'm really excited to see how that footage turns out, Mel. Be careful up there, I'm just about ready to head out under the bridge, and uh, good luck, and if you get a chance, would you swing up uh, to Blake Island for me? Yeah, I sure will, I'll head up toward uh, Blake after I uh, yeah. pass over there. I, well, I've, I've uh, gotten some reports that in that marina there, uh, they have some invasive species, possibly. Oh. And uh, I was just wanting to know just how crowded it was and how it looked. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll try that. Okay. Hey, thanks, Mel. Okay, fine. Thanks, okay, Doc. bye. Bye-bye. Wow. See the seafloor right now, we're in close to shore and it's shallow and we're studying the eel grass, looking at the root system. <laughs> it's amazing what you can see with these cameras. Hello everyone, I'm Dale Doc Kemke, the owner and operator of TMK Film Research, or as I like to call it, TFR. Over the years, I've worked with the State of Washington, Department of Fish and Wildlife, Department of Natural Resources, even the Invasive Species section of the state. We've come together on a joint venture, and it's been mandated by the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife, as well as the Governor's Office, the Department of Biology with the University of Washington, and lately the Quinault Tribal Fisheries Nation, has really stepped up and sponsored us. We were able to get into a river system and remove 1,800 pounds of derelict nets with dead sturgeon in them many times. Wow. <laughs> Removal team safety is always concern one, especially when you're around these nets. That's why we use no divers. You see, the cameras fly on their own, searching, then attaching themselves to the debris or ghost net or derelict gear that's lying on the seafloor. Then we bring it to the surface for safe disposal. Yeah. Now the insurance, labor equipment, and the total project costs are much lower, adding cost-saving cuts for the project. The cameras have no bottom time with little risk of liability. You know, it would take the work of six commercial divers, each having bottom time of 80 minutes to match one TFR, robotically puppeteered removal system. August 2013, the project was completed. We removed 1,800 pounds of ghost net bundles out of the waters of the Northwest. Currently, the top goals, objective activities, and strategies with phases are organized to achieve a healthy, diverse, sustainable, that's right, sustainable fish and wildlife populations in their surrounding and supporting habitats. That's important. You know, we want to locate, identify, and remove derelict gear, pernicious debris, including invasive species, and study the dissolved oxygen problem in the dead zones in this 22,000 miles of shoreline waterways in the Northwest, fresh and saltwater estuaries. They're all flowing into the sound. These dangerous barriers have been blocking the migration path of Chinook, Coho, Chum, Salmon species, as well as all other migrating marine life. TFR estimates at a minimum of five years researching the annoying gill netting ground along with other commercial and recreational water activities is required to complete this phase one. Phase two, the removal project, these go into three of phase, phase four, 
the restoration process, and then phase five education. Monitoring the beach, getting people involved. The five by five projects are ongoing with the other federal and state tribal fisheries. Boy, it's pretty out here today. All right, thank you for taking a minute and watching this, and hopefully we'll be in contact. Bye-bye. Wow, what a shot.